Hey, welcome to the Bent with the Boys. I'm Luke, and today I'm here with my friend Chris. Hello. So uh, we, we here to talk about like vinyl mainly, but Chris, do you want to like say a bit about yourself first, so people just don't think you're a random or a rag <laughs> off the street? Yeah, sure, man. But well, basically, um, I DJ Team Up in Cardiff um, every Friday night there. Um, you know, banging tunes, etc., etc. But I used to actually work for a website called Punktastic.com as well, um, handling all the reviews, um, going to festivals like Reading Festival, Heavy Festival, doing interviews. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where I got from. So there we go. He does actually know music, and I haven't just hired somebody who I like. Um, so as I said, you're talking about vinyl now. Yes. Hopefully, some of the, you are there collect vinyl. We both do. And it's kind of really exploded over like the last four or five years, really. Mm, yeah, maybe um, a bit longer than that. Yeah, you? and like it's I don't know something I never grown up saw was like gonna have a renaissance. I thought technology just kept moving forward. And like, yeah. why do you think this kind of like explosion has kind of happened? Well, I mean, it's obviously like you know the whole like it's the old school vibe to it as well. I feel um, you know there's nothing like the sound of a record. Nothing at all. Like yeah. it's not obviously the highest quality at all, but you know, there's nothing like the sound of that needle going onto the record the and crackles. Yeah, you know, you can just listen in a dark room and just you know just have the time you like. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like as you said, like you, you touched on the quality mm. there, and that's like one of the big arguments in like the whole. I think it sounds better though, man. Like I, and obviously you sound like a massive hipster when you say that. No, I think vinyl sounds yeah. better, but. I think it does, man. It's just, it just sounds like how music should have been recorded. And again, that sounds really sort of, um, like, weird yeah. To say, but like, it, it's just how it, it just sounds amazing. Like, I've got records which range from brand new, like you know, rock records, punk, whatever, back to like seventies, like sort of like disco, like Bee Gees, for example. Nice. Whatever, like, yeah, and like, it just sounds so amazing, especially the seventies stuff, definitely, because that was made yeah. for one at the time. But um, yeah, I got like a. A Johnny Cash record, nice. like, for like three quid in Camden Market. Yeah, and like, like, like just to hear, you know, like, you're right. There's, there is, there's that as well, man. Like people, you go searching for vinyl, man. You, you literally, you go into record shops and you just there. You can spend a good half an hour, just like, ah, cool, man. You buy it for like two pounds. You've just found yourself like an ultra cool record, just to, you know, just it's just for yourself. Like it's, it's just a great thing. Yeah, and like, like we we, we did a piece before me and Alan did a piece before um, talking about like digital music. Mm. And how now everything is like it's, it's all about singles. Yeah, it's all about singles now. One hundred percent. Like, like, do you think like violence like getting people listening to like whole albums again because of the kind of way you, you know like obviously you, you can't skip a track. Or, no, of course. Unless you've got real skills. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's <just> like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the the point of a vinyl, the reason why it's so big is just so they can fit that many tracks, and it is. I mean, single releases are great. Um, you know, it gives people like you know something to collect. You know, it gives the artists like license to like express themselves a bit more creatively as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, albums are where it's at. There's nothing like a 12-inch. Um, really? There's nothing like a 12-inch record, man. It's just, it's just a great thing. <laughs> but no, yeah, I mean, what it's like another thing as well, like you know, how artists can release a vinyl record and put so much work into it, like Apologies I Have None when they release London on vinyl. Mm. They include like a massive map of it and, you know, and I think that side of things for the artists is a good thing because it's, obviously there's some bands out there who will release a, a vinyl record and just, you know, just use it to cash in, set it through Hot Topic or whatever. Yeah. But then some bands out there will put thought and effort and it's those types of records that mean a lot. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, it's definitely something you can. It, it's more than just the, the wax or the vinyl, you know. It it, mm. it it is the whole packaging with it, which I suppose. Yeah. You know, it, it, it attracts a lot of people. That's you know, that's like I suppose like into it over it had the intersections where it was like the cut out kind of. Yeah. Like picture discs are coming back in as you know like. Yeah, who did I see? Um, I got a I beach, am the avalanche. Yeah, I got a beach yeah. line one the other day as well, which oh, was nice. pretty sick. Yeah. So I know Av avalanche did it with Wolverines. Mm. Um, and that was um, that was pretty cool, man. Like, I just like the whole. It just looks really old school. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, like I think like like I mentioned earlier, like it's growing. Like facts and figures showed us up 
something like 800,000 units between 2014 and 2015 in the UK alone. Yeah. I think the US saw 38% increase in that time. Yeah. And even like even websites like Bandcamp, which is like a, like a streaming website predominantly, mm -hmm. you can download off there. Like even through Bandcamp, vinyl sales on their website alone were at 40%. Yeah. And um, it just shows how big it's like, and I think like the resale market is oddly big as well. Mm. Oh yeah, I mean like, like, like for example, I got um, I'll show you now. You got the, the David Creeper EP. I think I paid like fifteen quid, not twenty quid, in a bundle with yeah. a T-shirt. I see that going for a hundred quid now on the resale market. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's and just, like, I know that you know they're they're, they're a good band. Don't get me wrong, I love them. But they're not even, you know, they're still in their fledgling yeah. part of their career. I mean, that's just the sort of thing that can happen for, for bands like Creeper Man. You sign to a major record label and, you know, you, you see things like this happening. And, you know, it is about taking a chance on a band as well. I'm not sure necessarily if I'd buy a record just to sort of um, see how it would resell. Yeah. But it's certainly definitely very interesting to, to see that happen, you know, like to have something which you literally took a chance on, you paid. 10, 15, 20 pounds for a record and to see that go up, you know, it sort of, it, it gives you a connect to the band as well, man, because, you know, you're supporting them and, you know, you're seeing their stock rise and you're seeing your collection rise, yeah. like in value and, you know, value is always a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I, don't, I don't know if I get a part with it, but... <laughs> no. Well, that's the thing, man, I got here, boom. This is like my pride and joy of all things. Yeah. This is like Fallout Boy. Um, a high fidelity pressing there. there you go. And this now will sell. This pressing probably not worth that much, but I only bought it for twenty quid off of. Um, and then I think you probably get like about fifty to hundred for it now for this pressing. Yeah. So you had the I think it's called Bottle Green. Mm. That one will set you back a lot of money. Yeah, I mean like like like, your, <laughs> like this odd is my pride and joy, which is brand new, so Transit Gloria on seven inch which I paid like twenty-five pound for. And like that's like that's a lot for a seven inch with two tracks which doesn't really have artwork or anything. It's you know No. But it's cool man. It's like you've got something here which is like it's rare. Yeah. And like that's part of the charm of it man. Like you can get all these rare records and they're they're one of the bands that like really because like, 'cause they've got such a cult following. Yes. The vinyl and stuff is is like ridiculously mm. Like I think, like like they re they repressed Asia mm. last year, and that was printing money for them. That, that was, was literally the the sort of like fever that sort of instilled within yeah. a lot of people I know to get that record straight away before it was even released, like you know for available to pick up or whatever. And like that was, I I, I was in a I was in Bristol when I got in a pub. Um, me, my 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 father, my friend Jack, we're going to see Yellow Card, and Less Than Jake, uh, play the Autogami. And I saw it come out on Twitter on the uh, store. I was like, gone by the time. <laughs> and then you see it comes out on Banquet. And you just yeah. in this pub in Bristol, like hammering your keyboard. <laughs> like, you see it go from however many copies to zero. And yeah. you're just like, oh my god. Like, and yeah, man, like, it's, it's a sort of thing which doesn't bring people together, but it's, it's a conversation point, isn't it? Like, you know, you, yeah. you can talk and sit about records for hours and hours, and like, you, you show someone your record collection, and you're just like, oh my god, you have this record. Like, and yeah, well, they do like like vinyl nights now, don't they? And like, and like some pubs and stuff do like bring your own vinyl nights. Yeah, and that I'm is, like, that how, is, that, is, how does that work? I have no idea, man. Like I think Goody Who um, did it. I think Urban maybe. Tap have done it as well. Yeah. I think so. Like, and you know, it's, it's a niche night for a certain. Sort yeah, of, um, I mean, like, like, I suppose you could go like many different genres there. You know, if a different group of people come along, all of a sudden. Yeah, you know, you make new friends and, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's a hobby at the end of the day. Um, there's nothing more to it really than, than it is it's a hobby and, you know, people, you know, Pokemon Go is a hobby, for example. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. And people just get hooked in onto it, man. It's not surprising when you get such, like, really, really nice pieces of artwork. Yeah. Um, like I said, the apologies I have none. Obviously, I got here as well, out of time down here, which, um, you know, again, this is probably a record that um, 
you know, introduced me to a lot of different things. Mm. Um, you know, it was their last record. Um, yeah. They released this. Um, I think I got the yeah the orange and black. Yeah, man. Um, but you, there. You, you see there, like the colorway on that is incredible. Like I've got this transit one, uh, Young New England, and just the colorway on that record is it's insane. Yeah. It's just crazy. So one. this is what you can do now. You know, you think about the seventies. It was like oh, colored record. That that's quite rare. Yeah. And like you can fit it to the theme of the band, obviously like this as well. You know, it, yeah. It just it gives music a bit of a you know another dimension, I think. Okay, so I think we're gonna like wrap up. But for last question, there's one record or one album that you could like have on record. Right. What would it be? Now there's a, there's, a, there's a couple I'd love, but I, I think for me, if you were AFI sing the sorrow, yeah, they repress that. It would be like Fry being like, shut up and take my money. <laughs> I I will say, um, Valencia, not Valencia, um, Shane's side project, Promise of Redemption, mm. um, he released an album called When the Flowers Bloom, which is a beautiful record, an absolutely beautiful record. If I could get my hands on that on vinyl, I would be a very happy man. Yeah, definitely. They got a new album coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, is it? Yeah, no, there we go. Um, so Check that out. Which well, will be out by the time this goes up. But, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Promise Redemption, new album. <laughs> yeah, give him a shout. Well, give the give the debut album a whirl, man, because it's absolutely phenomenal. Heartbreaking. Oh, when you when you re when you read into what they're about, it's yeah. heartbreaking. If if he, yeah, I mean, if you're going through a bad time, I would wholly recommend that record. Do a lot of things for you. But yeah, so uh, thank you for coming on, Chris. We'll uh, no hope we have Chris on in the future to talk about other things. Definitely. And uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, usual palaver. <laughs> thanks, guys. Cheers, guys.